Legalization hasn't necessarily made an impact on Black and Indigenous communities the way that it it should or the way people might um, naively hope without changes in infrastructure. Um, I don't actually think it has has severely or, or has impacted the, the mental health. I'll just give an example. Um, you know, my brother in law, um, he he's black and the, he gets stopped by the police so frequently. Um, and if someone were to tell him like, OK, yeah, now you can carry 30 up to 30 grams you know, dry cannabis in your pocket while you're driving. He's not going to do that. <laughs> like he doesn't, he, he, he knows not to do that because even if something is legal, I think Jordan, you said this so beautifully earlier, just because something is legal doesn't mean that you have access to the same, um, to this, to that, to, to, you don't have access to law and to use law in a way that, um, sees you as equal. So, um, I think the mental, mental health component of just being concerned about how you, you'll interact with the police system and, and how you'll interact with the criminal justice system because of legalization. I don't think there's been any shifts in the anxiety that comes with that or the fear that comes with that. The the impact of the war on drugs has been, as again, across sectors, across countries, and millions of people have had their lives ruined or or ended. And to repair that, right, it's a century of a century of this harm that gets each year more horrific. And so repairing that, I think, will require at least that amount of time of dedicated action. So in Canada, we know that Black and Indigenous people, specifically, and to an extent, South Asian and Asian populations, depending on where you are in the country, are disproportionately stopped, searched, documented by the police, stopped and questioned. And in the course of these stops and searches, we know un inev inevitably that some young people are going to be found in possession of cannabis. Cannabis is something that young people in Canada have done at relatively high rates in comparison to other parts of the world. And so we may expect that as the police go about stopping and searching people that they're going to find cannabis on them. Now, now because now, because of, of disproportionate police stop and search practices, again, it's Indigenous people, it's Black people largely who've been the targets of um, police efforts to uh, enforce drug laws and, and the Canadian war on drugs. Uh, we have some research uh, published first by a reporter at uh, Vice News showing quite literally from coast to coast, from Vancouver to Halifax, that Black people and Indigenous people were between um, three and, and nine times as likely as white people to be arrested for cannabis possession, even though we know that rates of cannabis use are relatively similar across racial groups. Now, this is hugely problematic, and especially for young people. Um, getting a criminal record for something like cannabis possession or other cannabis related offenses can impact on your ability to complete school. It may lead to school exclusion or difficulties with your education. It, of course, a criminal record uh, makes it more difficult for you to get a job when uh, employers conduct record checks. It can make it increasingly difficult to get housing because some private landlords are conducting criminal records checks as well. And then, of course, it can make it difficult to travel. Uh, many countries, including the United States, will not allow people with criminal records and drug-related criminal records to enter into their countries. So life becomes much more difficult from something as seemingly um, simple as a minor cannabis uh, possession offense. <laughs>